So the last few weeks have been pretty busy, lots of traveling and driving and exploring and enjoying and a decent amount of game dev work has gotten done, though I admit I was not able to do as much as I wanted to. And I think this is more so because my mind just hasn't been all that into it uh, in the past few weeks. I think I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself as to um, how much I should do and when I put that pressure on myself I don't feel like doing any of it. So I've just been allowing myself to take a break a little bit uh, while I travel and enjoy uh, the nature that's around me. Um, but when I have been doing work, uh, just sort of finding any place to work <laughs> while I was traveling, I appreciate having a laptop because I can work from anywhere. And I put together a Trello board as well, which um, has actually been very helpful for me. I have been able to specifically write out which little bugs that need to be fixed and then it makes little work sessions easier because I could just knock off one or two things and not feel like I have to build a whole new enemy class or do a whole big project just in one seat. I could just do one little thing and um, feel okay about it. I've also started getting back into some yoga and making sure I take lots of time to go on walks and just uh, appreciate the world around me. Uh, it's really important, especially when you spend all day in front of a computer to get outside. I'm sure everyone knows that, but you can never say it enough. So Sandeep and I drove our whole way from Goa to Mysore and we're here for a few months. So i um, feeling very comfortable now and ready to get back to work. Okay. So I finished doing some work with my enemies, making the uh, triggers for their attacks based on colliders and not uh, physics circle drawing. Gosh, I even forget how I did it before. But uh, it's working pretty good. Uh, they know when to attack and they know which direction to face and everything. Um, I think there's still only one bug left where if you kill it when you're next to it, it... oh. Seem to be okay. Sometimes it twitches in the animation for dying. Um, so there's, you know, small bugs like that still. Um, but otherwise seems to be good. There, there's what I was talking about. But otherwise it's working way better now. Um, I still don't have the attacks doing damage yet, and there's some issues for when they, you know, bump into each other. I guess actually that wasn't so bad. But uh, yeah, it, we'll see how hard or easy it is once I actually make their attacks hurt me. Like, this could be a really difficult game. <laughs> Not sure yet. But uh, otherwise, things are a lot smoother here, a lot less buggy, and um, I'm feeling pretty good about how I've left this enemy class so far. Also, I just wanted to add that I have uh, totally revamped the class so it's extendable. So I have um, a walking enemy and a flying enemy. So I've basically adjusted my base enemy class, and then I've made a walking enemy class that extends base enemy, and then a flying enemy for my robot, which I will soon be doing some more work on. Anyway, it's becoming, it's, it's just getting better. Slowly and slowly things are improving. Um, and just staying organized, keeping my classes uh, not from getting too messy and not from copying and pasting too much code, you know? So yeah, anyway, on to more work with my robot. So the first thing I did for my robot was I created a flying animation for it and it was actually completely not what a flying bat looked like, which someone kindly pointed out on Twitter, so I adjusted it and made it look a little bit more realistic. <laughs> as realistic as you can get from a uh, watercolor painted robot bat. Then I just uh, program some movement in so it'll go a certain distance uh, in the sky from where it started and then turn around and come back once it's hit that distance and um, and then I added some sinusoidal movement to it so it's bobbing in flight. Um, so yeah it turns out pretty good. I like the way it looks. So what I'm doing is I have a collider that's underneath the robot. It basically is a box that's below it. 
So the purpose is that once the player enters that box collider, it's a trigger that will start the diving action of the bat. It sort of works. You can see the bat moves toward the player. Um, but it doesn't go back. First issue. And then if I... Oh, it looks like we're stuck. Yeah. Anyway, so far so good. Okay. So it's coming together by going his collider thing. He comes toward me and he's like attacking me kind of, but then we move the same speed. So the only way to get out is like, there we go. And then he returns. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, it's like kind of working, I guess but it's just hard to escape currently. So, yeah, a couple of bugs, but I, I, uh, ooh. ooh. I think I got the timing working out for the robot attack when it dives. Um, the only problem is the transforms are a bit offset so it, it overlaps a bit, but check it out. So he goes down and he bites and then he goes back up. Down, bite, and back up. I feel like I want to make him move faster. So let's see if that's possible. I think I put the dive speed at 10. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is the bite happens faster that way. So it, it'll take some finicking. I also have to make sure like... When it's facing this way, I want the dive to be a little bit before. But when it's facing this way, the other way, I want the dive to be a little bit behind. So, uh, that's kind of confusing. But you know, we're getting there. I think it looks great. I like it. I'll give it some more time for the bite, I think. Okay, bye! So briefly, um, just to go through how I wrote the code for this diving aspect of my robot, uh, I just came up with it. I didn't follow any tutorials for this, so it might be a bit convoluted, but this is sort of what I thought of, and it's working so far, so I'm, I'm gonna stick with it until it starts to cause problems. So uh, basically I have three states, moving, diving, and returning, and while it's moving, it's just uh, flying back and forth in the sky, so I move left and right, and I bob, that's my sinusoidal function, and then if the state is diving, it'll lerp, and I set the parameters of where it's supposed to lerp, and lerp just means like it moves over time toward um, a specific direction that you set. And then if the state is returning, it'll just um, increase the y value of the position of the bat until it's back to whatever its origin was, and then it'll set the new origin to be wherever it returned to so it doesn't fly all the way back to where it started. That's if it like follows you um, while you're running. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this random, you know, state machine that I built, <laughs> I guess, and, uh, and, and how it's working pretty well. Anyway, that's the gist of my work right now, what I've gotten done, and I'm happy with the results of my robot, and this little bite animation is super cute, and I'm excited to have them spawning now um, in my game when I do the level generation, so that's what's going to come up next in my next video, and also actually making enemy attacks do damage. That's also going to happen in my next video, and at that point, I think the game will be a real game. <laughs> also, this has been bothering me for the whole video. My camera is centered in such a way where all I see is this, and it's really, really bothering me, and I'm sure it's been bothering all of you as well. So, I'm sorry. Is it this? That didn't fix a thing. 
that's probably what I want, right? I don't know guys, I'm still learning how to do this whole Unity thing, so uh, yeah, thanks for bearing with me for the amount of time that you've been bearing with me, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to you bearing with me some more as I keep making this game. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Here we go. Bye!